Welcome back. You've reached the eighth in a series of narrated slideshows of Programming on Purpose with Python. In this show, we're going to take the code we developed in the previous slideshow and turn it into a dual stopwatch. My name is Mike Callahan, and I'm a STEM educator. So using Python, we're going to design a dual stopwatch. This will be two independent stopwatches sharing the same interface. We're going to continue to learn about object-oriented programming, and we're going to learn about a new container widget. It's called the Tab Notebook. We also learn about a useful coding technique for ease of modifying existing code. That will be called syntactic sugar. And we're also going to learn about something called class variables, and how it helps us write efficient code. You must have Python 3.7 or later installed. You must have TK Intertoy 1.2 or later installed. If you don't know how to do that, go back to the very first slideshow and follow the instructions. And you should have the code from Programming on Purpose number 7. That will save you a whole lot of typing. The conventions will be, as always, code will be monospace text. New code will be highlighted in yellow. Objects will be in bold rounded text. And any new words will be introduced in italics. So what is a dual stopwatch? We're, we're going to have two independent stopwatches running at the same time on different overlapping pages. And we're going to be able to switch pages back and forth quickly by using a notebook widget. The two displays will be label widgets, and they're going to be colored differently and dynamically. And the stopwatches will also be controlled by independent, dynamically titled button widgets. Well, let's see what all this is going to look like. Here is what our GUI is going to be. And you can see we have our tabbed notebook. It looks like a normal frame, except for you have these little tabs that sit at the top. And uh, whenever one is active, you can see it's highlighted. So we have page one and page two. Page one, of course, to the left, page two to the right. And notice with the stopwatch being stopped, the label is labeled on page one, elapsed time one, and it's red. On page two, it's a labeled elapsed time two, and it's orange. And the buttons are as before. Well, we got a little bit of work ahead of us. All the methods in our GUI class are going to have to be changed. Class will create a TK Enter Toy window as before, but this time it's going to be passed two stopwatches, which will be combined into a tuple. And these are going to be made as attributes for the instances, so the methods will have access. So here is our new GUI class and our new init. And one of the things you notice is stopwatch now is going to be passed as a tuple, but it doesn't, the code doesn't change. This is an example of polymorphism, which means that the same code can handle different types of data structures, and it's a strength of Python. Self.freeze will have to change because we're going to have to keep track of who independent stopwatches, so self.freeze will turn into a list. Now we have to use a list because tuples are immutable. That means we can't change it. So our new make GUI, this is going to be probably where we're going to have the most extensive changes. So let's go through it slowly. So what do we have to do in our new make GUI? First, we have to set the window title as before, create the needed styles for labels, and we're going to have two new styles, create the custom buttons. That hasn't changed. This is the brand new part, create a two-page notebook, and we'll see how to do that. We're going to have to add the label and the buttons to both pages, and we'll plot all the widgets, display the first page, and then update the display. So the title 
basically the same as before, but we're going to call it stopwatch version 2. And here's where we create our styles. Notice we have our red and green style. We haven't changed that, but we're going to have two new styles. The foreground is going to be dark orange and or blue, depending on if it's stopped or running. And again, feel free to use your own colors here. Now the command buttons, that line hasn't changed. That code is the same as before. Here is the notebook widget. You can see the notebook is really nothing more than a widget, which is a container of other widgets. The way it works is it creates a series of overlapping pages, which are TK Intertoy windows, and the pages are selected by label tabs at the top. So on the example, to the left, we have page one displayed, and we are looking at the page one window. To the right, we have two, page 2 displayed, looking at the page 2 window. So here is the method call, notebook. It's a little bit different because you have a tag, and then the tabs, that's a list of the strings of the title of each tab page. And then you have those optional keyword arguments. So this will create a series of overlapping container windows. And we have to have the two required arguments, which are first, then followed by the optional keyword arguments. Unlike a lot of the other widgets, there is no frame prompt. And this method will actually return something. It's going to return two new TK Enter toy windows that we are going to have to keep track of. And so we will add them as an attribute so all the other methods can see them. So let's see how we use this method. So it's actually quite simple. You just say self.pages. That's going to be our attribute. Equals self.win. That is our main window. Then we're going to say add notebook. And we're going to tag is going to just be notebook. And our pages are going to be 1 and 2. So this is going to create a two-page notebook with the tabs labeled 1 and 2. And it's going to return two TK Enter toy windows, which we're going to keep track of, to a list, which we're going to call self.pages. So if we want to access the first window, then that's going to be the index operator of 0. and The second window will be the index operator of 1. So here's the actual code. Just what you saw on the previous slide, self.pages equals self.win, add notebook, notebook 1 and 2. So here's what it looks like inside the memory. We have self.win, which is a TK enter window, and it has one widget, which is a notebook, but the notebook contains two Windows itself, self.pages of 0, self.pages of 1. So the windows are inside a widget, which is inside another window. So this is what you call embedded windows. So now we're going to actually put something in the first page. So we use self.pages of 0. So that is the TK Enter toy window for page 0. And then we just use the add label method. And we're just going to stick in there elapsed. And the title will be elapsed time 1. And the style is going to be r.tlabel. Very similar to what we did before. And then we're going to add our buttons. Again, self dot pages of zero add button the tag is buttons and the command is buttons and that's just using that tuple that we had above and we're going to repeat the same steps for the second page again very similar to what we did before 
Now, each label is going to use a different style. That way, it makes it very easy for the user to see what stopwatch is active. Okay, I know things are starting to get a little bit complicated, so hopefully the diagram below will kind of clear this up. Even though the widgets have the same tag, they are in different windows, and so they will be different keys in two different dictionaries. The reason why we use the same tag is to make the code a lot simpler to write, and you will see how that works. So again, we have self.pages of zero that has a content dictionary that has two keys in it, elapsed and button. The same thing for self.pages of one. Both of them are contained in the notebook, which is contained in the self.win. So this diagram hopefully will clear things up for you. So now it's time to plot the notebook. Now notice there's only one widget on the self.win page, and that is the notebook. So it's a very simple plot routine. It's just self.win plot notebook row equals zero. And really the row equals zero could have been left off. So now we're going to plot the page one widgets. And Again, the index operator of zero selects the first page. And you can see, again, this is pretty simple plotting. There's not a whole lot going on there, just the rows and the, uh, the pad Y uh, for separating the buttons from the display. And we do the same thing on the page two widgets. And the index operator, of course, will be index operator of one, selecting the second page. And we're going to disable the second button as before, which is the split button. But we have to do it on both pages. So we have self.pages of zero of change state and self.pages of one of change state. And this is something new. We're going to set the notebook to the first page, which would be uh, self.win.set. Notebook is, again, the tag. And we're going to set it to page 0, which will be, of course, the first page. And finally, we call update. So there is our new Make GUI. Again, if you've fallen behind, this is a great time to stop the slideshow and get caught up. Be very careful when you're typing here. It is very easy to make a syntax error. So when you get to the point where you're starting to execute your code, uh, when you see messages pop up, look very, very closely to make sure that your syntax matches this screen as closely as you can. So now the new start stop. And this method is going to be connected to the first button on both pages, and it will start and stop the active or displayed stopwatch. The nice thing about this method is it's going to work for both pages. But it is a little bit complex, so let's tackle this now. So we are going to assign the starting and the stopping styles. We're going to get the active page number, and we'll see how to do that. And then we also want to get the active page window. And then if the stopwatch is running, then we want to stop the active stopwatch. If it's frozen, we want to unfreeze it. Then we want to update the active page button text, the active label style. We want to disable the active split button and enable the active reset button. Else, we want to start the active stopwatch, update the button text, update the label style, enable the split button, and disable the reset button.
Well, a lot of steps there. Let's dive in and see how we're going to accomplish this. So assigning the start and stop styles, that really hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, we're just basically putting both the start styles for each button and the stop styles for each button into a tuple. And we're going to use the active page as an index into that tuple. And you'll see how that works in just a second. So now, this is how you can tell which is the active page. It's simply the self.win.get method of notebook. And it's going to return either a 0 or a 1, depending on what page is active. Next, we want to get the active page window. And we're going to put this into a variable called active win. So active win will replace the code self.pages of active. Now, really, this is not necessary, but it makes the code a lot simpler and easy to reuse. And this is what I call syntactic sugar. And we're going to do the same thing for the active stopwatch. It's going to be active stop equals self dot stop w active. You can see how getting the notebook page and using it as an index is really useful. So let's look at what our syntactic sugar is going to do. When we compare the old method to the new method, which supports dual stopwatches, you can see at the top we used to say self.stop.running. Now we just say active stop.running, and then self.stopw.stop is now active stop. And then the if self freeze is now if self freeze of active. Then split resume, there's no change there. And then self dot win, all of those have changed to active win. But notice the rest of the function call, or I'm sorry, method call is the same. Then we have self dot win change widget. That is the same except for style is a little more complicated now instead of in style equals r dot t label, it's now style equals stop style of active. The next two lines, except for the change of self dot win to active win, are unchanged. And we can go down to the else clause, and you can see that again our syntactic sugar is making life pretty easy for us. Just a few changes we're going to have to make in our code. So in review, self.stopw is replaced with active stop. Self.freeze is replaced with self.freeze of active. Self.win is replaced with active win. And the style argument was replaced with start or stop style of active. Here, you're definitely going to have to freeze your screen and get caught up with all these changes. So, using our syntactic sugar, we were able to reuse most of our code, and that's what it's good for. So, now the new reset. The only change we have to do is determine the active page and the stopwatch. And since we're only changing one or two lines of code here, the syntactic sugar is, is not as useful, and so we won't need it. So first, you get the active page number. This code is exactly the same as it was in the previous method. Then you were going to reset the active stopwatch, and we're going to Update the display. So, easy changes there. The only change between the old and the new is we have to have in there about the active 
art. But other than that, it's pretty similar. Now, update is going to need similar changes as well. So we get the active page number, and you can see that's a real useful bit of code to copy and paste. And so the code is similar, except for instead of self.freeze, we have self.freeze of active. Instead of self.stopw, it's self.stopw of active. And then at the bottom there, you have self.pages of active. So really, all you had to do was add that active part to the existing code. And the self.win.master.after call is unchanged. So there's the old versus the new. Again, not as extensive as you might have thought. And this is showing you the advantage of writing modular object oriented code. So split resume, well, very similar to what we've done before. We have the active part, determining what is the active page, and then adding the active as the index. And basically the same thing of what we did with the previous method. Comparing the old and the new. So again, Our, the way we've developed this code is really helping out now we're trying to modify it. So if you need to get caught up, here's a good chance to freeze the screen and make the changes. So here is our brand new GUI class. So I bet when you thought, oh gee, we're going to do a, a lot of work here, turns out that it wasn't as much work as we thought. And again, that shows that our original design was, was pretty good, being modular and object-oriented. So hopefully your code looks very similar to what you see on the screen. So now it's time to change main, and it turns out there's very minor changes there. All we have to do is create two stopwatches and pack them into a tuple. So there you go. Just take the old main and just add a comma, stopwatch, and uh, the enclosing parentheses for the tuple. And the GUI call hasn't changed at all. So now let's test it. And hopefully, you will see two stopwatches that you can start and stop independently. You can freeze them and just have a good time. And uh, give this a good working out. Uh, if you see any errors, they're going to pop up in the shell window. And from looking at the error message in the shell window and looking at your code and comparing with the previous slides, you should be able to be successful. But we can do a little thing to improve our code, and it's a great time to introduce the concept of class variables. Now notice that both stopwatches have an attribute variable that do not change and are the same. Also notice that in some of the methods, there are assignments that do not change. But every time you click the stop and start button, you know, those assignments are going to be done again. And that's kind of redundant and unnecessary. There is a very easy way in Python to put all the instances in a class to share the same variable and all the methods to do the same as well. And this saves memory 
and time. So let's see how to take advantage of class variables. Hopefully this diagram will show you how class variables work. In the past we've had instances and the instances have attributes and the attributes will point to instance variables and notice that each instance has its own copy of its attribute. This is different from a class variable. The class variables sit outside the instance and are referenced by using the class name. So again, we have the difference between an instance variable and a class variable. So to take an instance or a method variable and turn it into a class variable, first of all, you decide which variables should be moved. And you look for variables that should be assigned only once. Then you take them out of their methods and you move them outside, and I'll show you where they're going to land. Then when it's time to references, you put the name of the class in front of the variable. So instead of it would be self.variable if it was an instance variable, it's going to be class.variable. So let's see how this works. So looking at a knit, we have self.button text. It really only needs to be assigned once, and both instances can share it. So this is a possible candidate for a class variable. Now it's really not a big deal because this is only assigned when you create an instance. In our case, that's only going to happen twice. So whether it happens once or happens twice, it's really not a big deal. But since we're learning this new technique, let's move it. Start stop, both start style and stop style are excellent candidates. Notice every time we start and stop the stopwatch, that is going to cause that assignment to occur. That's completely unnecessary. We only need to do it when the class is created. So those we're definitely going to move. Template. We've kind of been ignoring template, but notice it's, it's pretty much every time update executes, which is a hundredth of a second, it gets assigned. And that is really completely unnecessary and very wasteful. So this is a great candidate to move. So here's how you do it. And you can see it's very simple. All you have to do is under the class before the init method, you just list what the variables are going to be. And I like to label them as a little section there called class variables. And notice there's no self or anything like that. You just say button text, start style, stop style, template. And notice that in our init now, we moved button text out of there. So that got promoted as a class variable. So how do you call these class variables? For start stop, all you have to do is say style equals GUI dot stop style or style equals GUI dot start style. So notice the difference between an instance variable where I have highlighted here is self.freeze. That's an instance variable. But a class variable is GUI.stopStyle and GUI.startStyle. Updates the same thing. Template now is a class variable, so it's GUI.template. So here's our final GUI. And you can see our changes, where the class variables are at the top. And when we call the class variables, we have GUI dot in front of them. We run our new test. And now our new dual stopwatch is a little more accurate, since all the redundant assignments, especially that template one, were eliminated. So it's probably pretty accurate to the nearest hundredth of a second.
So in conclusion, since we have writing in a modular object-oriented style, the changes were actually relatively painless. The design work was the tricky thing. The notebook widget is great for applications with overlapping windows. So do not be afraid to use it. It's actually quite simple. While it adds more lines, the syntax sugar can really help you reuse code and make things easier to understand. And class variables, even though they are quite simple to use, they're great for single assignments that are shared between methods and instances, and it is the way to go for maximum efficiency. Now, for convenience, we've been placing all our code into a single file, and Python calls files modules. Now, we could have broken this application into several modules. For example, the stopwatch class and the sec to HMSC function could be in a separate module called stopwatch.py. Notice that stopwatch really could care less about the GUI. It's an independent little class that could be used by all kinds of applications. So if that was the case, our main would be a little bit different. You would say def main, import stopwatch, and then you would make the tuple just stopwatch.stopwatch. .stopwatch. And that's a little bit funny the way it looks, but remember the lowercase stopwatch is a module name. The uppercase stopwatch is the class call. So that's kind of common in Python. Or you could have done from stopwatch, import stopwatch, again, from lowercase stopwatch, which is the module, import uppercase stopwatch, which is the object. And if you do that, then you don't have to say stopwatch dot stopwatch. You can just say stopwatch. Either way, it shows you how you can break out sections of code into independent modules. And that is easier when you're developing new applications based on existing code. TK Intertoy is hosted at the above link and the documentation for it can be found at the second link. But the easiest way to get to it is just Google TK Intertoy. And at that second link there are nice examples in a tutorial that shows you how to use the widgets. Our next application is going to be a big change. We are going to develop what's called a web scraper, which will access data on web pages without using a browser. We're going to develop the class for the web scraping, and we're going to use a technique which is called regular expressions. Now, this is not a Python thing. This is a computer science thing. It is extremely powerful and useful, but it is quite complex. And entire books have been written about this subject, so we're just going to be using a small part of this library. We're also going to learn how to read files and access web pages in Python. So the next slide shows should be a lot of fun. If you live in or near southern Indiana or Louisville, Kentucky, I teach two-hour free seminars at both the Jeffersonville and the New Albany Public Libraries. Just call or go online to reserve a spot. Thank you for watching. And if you're enjoying these narrated slideshows, be sure to subscribe and tell your friends if they want to learn Python. Until the next time, happy coding.